fire. Flying out of the Earth atmosphere and going up into space needs a lot of energy. We are going to learn about rocket science and what it takes to launch something into space. All right, first let's understand how far is space. Space is not too far as you might imagine. It's just less than 100 miles from the Earth's surface. To move out of Earth into space, we have to consider two major opposing forces. Number one is the gravitational force of Earth, and number two, the atmospheric drag or air resistance. To overcome these forces, we need a propulsion system, a system that can generate the thrust of some sort to make itself go forward. Let's understand the principle behind a propulsion system. To propel, you can be your own propulsion system. Here you can see how a person riding a skateboard pushes against the Earth's surface to move forward. Similarly in cars, the tire pushes on a road and the car moves forward. When you think about it, you are pushing on something external to make yourself go forward. But it doesn't have to be like this. Suppose you throw something heavy standing on a skateboard or shoot a gun standing on a skateboard, this action will push you in the other direction. The weight or bullet fired from the gun has inertia. It doesn't want to move. That's Newton's first law. In this example, you can notice the snooker ball in dress doesn't want to move and remain in its state as per Newton's first law. To make it move in a direction, we have to exert a force and push on it. Here you can see we use a snooker stick to move the ball. That's Newton's second law. And when you do that, the object exerts an equal and opposite force back. That's Newton's third law. In this example, you can see how a toy car tied with an inflated balloon pushes forward as the air molecule gets released from the balloon. The same principle is used in rocket pro propulsion. We carry a huge amount of fuel in the rocket and push that fuel out at an incredible speed. And that makes a rocket move forward. The fluid that we push out from the rocket is called the working fluid. Now let's take an example of a propeller plane. In this case, the working fluid is the air and we don't have to carry that. It's all around us in the atmosphere. So the propellers move and push the air creating a thrust that makes us move forward. So you might have a question, why not use a propeller plane? to go to space. Why do we need a rocket? Unfortunately, there is no air in the space. The atmosphere gets thinner as we go up into space and the propeller plane will not have enough thrust to go forward. So how do we solve this problem with rocket? We carry something called oxidizer, which is basically an element like oxygen that can combine with the fuel to burn and generate thrust. Okay, now we know how to generate thrust to propel an object out of Earth atmosphere. One more thing to understand is that the energy or a thrust needed to escape the Earth gravity and the atmospheric drag is huge. The distance a rocket can travel is limited by its fuel and oxidizer storage capacity. With a given constraint to fly efficiently into Earth orbit, the rocket vertical travel time should be limited. We need to travel vertically up only until we escape the Earth atmosphere, where the air drag is very high. Once you travel outside the Earth atmosphere, the rocket usually moves horizontally to the Earth. To understand this concept, imagine a two-dimensional gravity well. This appears like a funnel. If you flip a marble from the outer edge, it starts spinning slowly and then it, as it gets closer, it bends faster. If you want the marble to exit the funnel, you will have to spin it horizontally from the bottom to spin out. This is an excellent way to visualize how rocket moves out of Earth's gravitational field into orbit around the Earth. 
But how does the object stay in Earth orbit once it goes out of Earth atmosphere? For example, the International Space Station or satellite stays in orbit without falling back to Earth. The reason is that the satellite or International Space Station moves around the Earth so fast the outward radial acceleration is equal to the gravity's inward acceleration. So both these forces balance out and you have a net zero gravity. What you see is a Newton's mountain thought experiment. Earth gravity is causing the cannonball to fall towards its center, but, is, but its initial horizontal velocity is moving it a certain distance before the gravitational acceleration is causing the cannonball to hit the ground. If the initial horizontal velocity is high enough, the cannonball's rate of descent will be same as the rate of fall of the curvature of the Earth. So even though the cannonball is falling, it is falling continuously and at a rate that ensures that it will not strike the Earth's surface. For the same reason, the space station is zooming around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour to stay in its orbit, basically to overcome the Earth's gravitational force. To go up and stay in orbit, the only thing that matters is how fast we will go horizontally to the Earth's surface. So we have the outward radial acceleration to prevent the Earth gravitational force from pulling the rocket or satellite back to Earth. Thank you for watching this video.